Hello and welcome to Web Learning with Knowledge is Shared. In today's episode I'll show how I build my QC charger out of necessity. All the QC chargers that are online have one port for quick charge and other ports are just regular 5 volts. I even purchased one with four outputs but it also had only one port for quick charge and three other ports that are regular 5 volts. Today most of the phones are quick charge enabled. When I'm driving in the car, only one of the phones can be quickly charged and the rest need to be connected to the regular ports and then it takes a very long time to charge them. As I couldn't find anything online, I decided to build one by myself. In today's episode I'll show what I did, how I searched and how I built it from scratch. So searching the web, I came across this part, CHY100. This is a USB charger physical interface for IC for Quick Charge 2 applications. I also found this online presentation that explains how it works. So the CHY100 implements Quick Charge 2 and is backward compatible with any USB 5V charger. It changes the output by asking the phone and returns USB no more than 20 milliseconds. So how does it work? So after power up of the CHY, CHY shortens N5, so the D plus and D minus, it shortens the pin for about 20 milliseconds. The phone that is connected to the D plus D minus sees this uh, short, and if it's a quick charge, the phone will increase the voltage on D plus above 0.325 volts, for, uh, for longer than 1.25 seconds. This will enter the CHY and then the CHY will know that the phone is a quick charge enabled phone. After this, the CHY will turn off N5 and will turn on N4. The N4 is connected with a 19.58 kilo ohm to D minus. This will tell the phone that it recognized the quick charge and it's going to uh, increase the voltage on the output of the device. The specification also explains how to change the different MOSFETs N1, N2, N3. This in relationship will output 5 volts, 9 volts or, tw tw or 12 volts from the main power supply. So if the plus has 0.6 volts then it means that the adapter voltage will need to be 12 volts. If the D plus 3.3 and D minus is 0.6, then the device needs 9 volts, and so on. So how does it really work? Well, after the communication, output voltage regulator that we have here is an adjustable voltage regulator. With the ad adjustable voltage regulator, you have to set the output voltage depending on the resistor that you have between the output and the ground. Now because we have the CHY connected to this output resistor, every time we change V1, V2, V3, the output voltage regulator will see a different resistance in the adjustable pin, thus will change the output voltage. As you can see, the N1, N2, N3 are connected to ground. And when the CHY will change V1, v V2, or V3, they will be in parallel to the adjustable resistor of the output regulator, and this will change the total resistance that the output voltage regulator sees. So first of all, we have to find an output voltage regulator that will fit our needs. Now SD has a tool called eDesign Studio. This is an online tool. Then we can go to power conversion, power supply, DC to DC, and we can click create. Our minimum voltage will be at 12 volt because we're using the car voltage. Our maximum will be around the 18 or 20 volt. So we can put 18. Our voltage will be either 9 volt because that's the maximum for the quick charge and our current will be 3 amp. The one I used uh, in the design is the STS-40 IDR or you can use the PHR. Um, this is what I used because that was the easiest one to find and to solder. 
also you can see that the design it, it was very simple so we have an inductor two resistors and some caps start design now we can change different values in the capacitors and different devices so we can fit and find whatever we want for example the inductor i had laying around 4.7 micro depending again on the the current that you have and also i had some capacitors again it's very important that the voltage rating will be much higher than the maximum voltage that you will use in any given capacitor and again the same thing because i don't want to have different capacitors we can see that the efficiency is about 93 percent at all given currents and nice performance now regarding the resistors after quick calculation we can see that with given 205 kilo ohms and 20 kilo ohms we have a voltage output of 9 volts if we want the voltage output to be 5 volts then the given resistor will be 105 kilo ohms and if we will put this as 10 kilo ohms you can see that the voltage output will be uh, about 9.21 now the resistance won't be 10 kilo ohms it will start as 20 kilo ohms with 5 volts but then when V1 will be connected then the resistance will drop in half so it will be 10 kilo ohms and the Vout will rise to 9 volts. To design the board, I went to EasyDA. This is a free online design tool that you can do schematics and PCB. I will leave a reference in the link that you can fork the design. So how the schematic works? We have V in, v, v in plus, V in minus, the 15 microfarad capacitor, another small capacitor, then we have the ST1S40 IDR with the two resistor, then 19 kilo ohm and the 110 kilo ohm plus a 33 nanofarad capacitor as instructed in the design. You can see it here, there's another small capacitor. The 4.7 microhenry inductor. This is the step down conversion. Then we have another capacitor that could be on the output. We have a LED that we can see the V out that is work coming from the DC to DC. We have the CHY100. We have the two resistors, R8 and R9. At the beginning, the device will give out 5 volts because we have 110 kilo ohms and 20 kilo ohms. This is 5 volts. When the CHY will work, V1 will be connected and we'll have 110 kilo ohms divided by 10 kilo ohms. This will give us 9 volts as the output. The V2 is a 30 kilo ohm. This is for 12 volts if there is any phone that is connected and the quick charge will need to output 12 volt at the output. V3 is connected to a pull up to two divided resistor and R is connected to ground. All this information can be found in the data sheet of the device. As you can see here in the data sheet of the device. With EZDA, you can implement parts directly from their LCSC official website you can add resistors capacitors inductors and then you can buy them online finishing the, the schematic you can go and convert project to PCB and then you can implement the parts and then route them as necessary after doing that you can do Gerber output click OK 
PCB quantity 10 and will cost you only $2 to produce 10 PCB boards. So after receiving the PCB boards, I've set them up and I'll show you how I soldered them. So I started first of all to take all the PCBs and because those are SMTs and sometimes it's a bit hard, I put a dab of solder at uh, each point and this will help afterwards to put the devices uh, quite quickly. Then to put the parts you just take uh, the resistor or capacitor you put it in the right place and you touch uh, one side of it. Then you keep on going with all the parts by connecting only one side of them. After you connected them, you just take another solder and you connect the other side. And because one side is already connected, it's quite easy to finish with all of them. Again, after doing this, just finishing up and soldering all the other parts uh, that weren't soldered. After connecting all the parts with the cable and the connector, you take uh, the power supply, you put it through a, a voltage measure and a load, and then you take the power supply, your main power supply, you put uh, control on the limit of the current so you won't blow it up and you test that you're getting the right voltage. After doing that you put some spacers and you start st stacking them up as many as you need. Don't forget to connect the power between them. I hope you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.